Pulmonary hypertension, the silent killer. Pulmonary hypertension, PH, is a disease that goes highly undiagnosed and is extremely deadly. PH is classified as an underdiagnosed chronic disease that not a lot of doctors know about. But PH also goes highly misdiagnosed as a number of other diseases that share similar symptoms. I will discuss what pulmonary hypertension is, what tests may be run to diagnose PH, and what treatments and medications are used to treat PH. First, I will talk to you about pulmonary hypertension and what it is. I will discuss the symptoms, organs affected, and both P and about pH in women. Pulmonary hypertension affects two primary organs, the heart and the lungs, but it mostly affects the lungs. When the pulmonary arteries and the lungs become narrowed, blocked, or destroyed is when pulmonary hypertension begins. What this does is make it harder for blood to flow through the lungs, which then raises the pressure in the lungs arteries. But as pressure builds, the heart's lower right chamber, the right ventricle, must work that much harder to pump blood to your lungs, eventually causing the heart muscle to weaken and eventually fail. There are many symptoms to pH and they are as follows. Shortness of breath, initially while exercising and eventually while at rest, fatigue, dizziness or fainting spells, chest pressure or pain, swelling in the ankles, legs, and eventually in the abdomen, bluish color to the lips and skin, and a racing pulse or heart palpitations. Idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, IPH, is when there is no underlying cause for pH. But in most people with IPH, they have a gene as a risk factor for developing pulmonary hypertension. Secondary pulmonary hypertension, SPH, is pulmonary hypertension that is caused by another medical problem. This form is much more common than IPH. Conditions that cause SPH are the following. Blood clots in the lungs, pulmonary emboli, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases such as emphysema, connective tissue disorders such as scleroderma or lupus, sleep apnea and other sleep disorders, heart abnormalities that, can, that you can be born with, congenital heart defects, sickle cell anemia, chronic liver disease, cirrhosis, lung disease such as pulmonary fibrosis, a condition that causes scarring in the tissue between the lungs air sac, left-sided heart failure, living at altitudes higher than 8,000 feet or 2,438 meters, climbing or hiking to altitudes higher than 8,000 feet without acclimating first, and the use of certain stimulant drugs. Eisenmenger syndrome can also cause pulmonary hypertension because of a hole between the two lower heart chambers, the ventricles. What the hole does is it causes oxygen-poor blood to mix with oxygen-carrying blood. It returns the blood into the lungs instead of going to the rest of the body, which will then cause the pressure to increase in the pulmonary arteries, which and then causes pulmonary hypertension. pH is more predominant in women due to the estrogen levels. It is shown to be three times more frequent in women than men. There, when there are higher estrogen levels, like during pregnancy, pulmonary hypertension presents itself due to the need to supply blood to the woman's body and that in the fetal and placental area of the body. Estrogen acts as a vasoconstrictor on the pulmonary arteries and affects the right ventricle. Next, I will talk to you about the diagnostic process of pulmonary hypertension. I will discuss the tests that are run, what the diagnostic process for a pH patient is, and what the different classes of pH are. There are many tests that can be run to help in the diagnostic process of pulmonary hypertension one of which is blood tests. The doctors will use this to check for certain substances in the blood that may, that may show if pulmonary hypertension is present or its complications. A chest x-ray may be able to check for pulmonary hypertension in the pulmonary arteries or if the right ventricle of the heart is enlarged, although an x-ray will appear normal in about one-third of pH patients. A Doppler echocardiogram uses sound waves to show a beating heart on the monitor. This test will usually help lead a doctor suspect pH depending to suspect pH depend if they suspect pH depending on the results of this test. This will show how well the heart is functioning along with the size and thickness of the heart muscle. Right heart catheterization is done by placing a heart a catheter through a vein in the neck or the groin that is threaded into the right ventricle of the heart and the pulmonary artery. This allows for the doctor to directly measure the pressure of the main pulmonary arteries and right ventricle. This is the most reliable and accurate way to diagnose a patient of pulmonary hypertension. 
A pulmonary function test measures how much air in the lungs can hold and the airflow in and out of the lungs. There are several other diagnostic tests that a patient's doctor may choose to run. Your doctor may choose to run genetic tests if you've had a family member with pulmonary hypertension. The diagnostic process for a pH patient is quite a rigorous one. My mother was once, once someone who had to go through this process. I remember how she was in the hospital for 30 days before the doctors were finally able to figure out what was wrong with her. We were lucky enough that she had a doctor that had a patient with the disease and knew exactly which test to run to be able to diagnose her. But considering at this time, this disease had only been known about by a few doctors, and for 14 years, it was no surprise that the doctors were struggling to diagnose her. But because of the FenPen scandal that broke out in the early 90s, more attention was being drawn to pH. But my mom had never taken any of the big diet pills at the time, so they had no reason to even think of this disease. But she did have it. In August of 2004, my mom was diagnosed with class 4 idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension has four classifications. Class 1, patients in this category have no symptoms during ordinary physical activity. Their hearts function normally. Class 2, although these patients are comfortable at rest, ordinary physical activity is somewhat limited by undue breathlessness, chest pain, fatigue, or near fainting. Class 3, these patients usually have no symptoms at rest, but their physical activity is greatly limited by breathless, breath, breathlessness, chest pain, fatigue, or near fainting while doing routine things. Class 4, these patients are often breathless and tired even while resting and can't do any physical activity without symptoms. They show signs of right heart failure under... heart failure under the WHO symptom, anyone who is prone to fainting goes into this class. And lastly, I will talk to you about the different drugs and treatments that are available and used for pH. The treatments for pulmonary hypertension are complex and require extensive follow-up care. A pH patient may be on anywhere from one to four different therapies at any given time. One type of medication used in the treatment plan for a pH patient are blood vasodilators. Vasodilators. Vessel dilators, vasodilators. Vasodilators open up narrowed blood vessels. The most commonly prescribed vasodilator for pH is Flolan. This has to be constantly infused through an intravenous IV catheter via a small pump that is worn in the pack, worn in a pack on the belt or shoulder. Another commonly used form is Ventavis. Ventavis is inhaled roughly every two to three hours through a nebulizer. Endothelian receptor antagonists are medications that reverse the effect of endothelian, a substance in the walls of the blood vessels that cause them to narrow. One of these medications is Traclear, and may this may improve energy levels and symptoms. This drug requires monthly liver monitoring as well. Another of these is Lateris. This drug can also cause severe liver damage if not taken appropriately. Sildenafil and Tadafil, drugs of this type are Rivashio and Viagra and Cialis are on the Sildenafil and Itzirka is on the Tadafil are sometimes used to treat pulmonary hypertension. These work by opening the blood vessels in the lungs to allow blood, throw, blood flow more easily. High dose calcium channel blockers, these can be used to help relax muscles in the walls of the blood vessels. They include medications such as Norvisac, Cartizem, Tiazic, even though these can be effective, only a small number of pH patients respond to them. Doctors may also prescribe anti anticoagulants. Warfarin is one of these to help prevent the formation of blood clots within the small pulmonary arteries. The, this has to be taken exactly as prescribed because it could cause severe side effects if taken incorrectly. Doctors may also use diuretics. These are more commonly known as water pills. They help with eliminating the excess fluid from the body. This will help reduce the amount of work that the heart has to do. They may also be used to limit fluid buildup in the lungs. So doctors may also sometimes suggest the use of oxygen to treat the pulmonary hypertension. This is because this is especially used if the person lives at high altitudes or has sleep apnea. Some pH patients eventually require constant oxygen therapy. But with taking medication properly, a pH patient can live a manageable lifestyle. For example, 
My mom was given five years to live at the time of diagnosis. We've been lucky enough to have her around for nine, and I'm hoping for much longer. But she sticks to her treatment plan, and it works. But there are also two types of surgeries that may be performed for pH patients. And atrial septostomy is an open heart surgery that is done for medications that can't con is done if medications can't control the pH of the patient. Um, in this surgery, a surgeon will create an opening between the left and right chambers of the heart to relieve the pressure on the right side of the heart. This has some serious complications, including heart rhythm abnormalities. Transplantation, sometimes a lung or a heart lung transplant may be an option for younger patients with idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. There are major risks associated with transplantation, including the rejection of the organ or organs and serious infections. Immunosuppressants must be taken for the rest of the patient's life if to help reduce the chance of rejection. Pulmonary, pulmonary hypertension does not have a cure, but it is quite manageable. As you can see, pulmonary hypertension is a deadly disease that affects a great number of people. If not treated, the symptoms of the disease will worsen. Having someone very close to me, my mom, with this disease pushes me to advocate awareness. There is still a lot unknown about pH, but more information becomes available each and every day. In the end, pH is currently a terminal disease.